Hello, and welcome to Skills to Pay the Bills, where today's segment of Resources Unplugged will uncover how other people's money is making a vital difference in the lives of incarcerated inmates and their families. I am your host, Lorette Farris, co-founder of iBoss Inc., where we discover and develop investable businesses. My guest today is Zia Rana, co-founder, president, and CEO of Text Behind, where they are connecting relationships today for a better tomorrow. Welcome to the show today, Zia. Pleasure. Thank you for being here. The quality and frequency of communicating with loved ones while incarcerated is significant to hold together the threads of family relationships, husbands with wives, parents with children. Helping them to traverse this divide is text behind. And again, Zia Reyna with me today will help us better understand how one company that wanted to affect change in how inmates communicate has now been able to do so by raising outside capital for this vision. I think that is just fabulous, Zia, and I'm just looking forward to, to getting into understanding how this works. Sure. If we can just start by you helping us understand, who is Zia? Well, I was um, born in Pakistan, 79, and um, over the years I kept traveling across the world um, doing these technology products. So in 2007, I was invited by the U.S. Trade and Commerce Department to come to U.S. And uh, since then, I've been uh, working with different technology products. And I'm a simple person living in Maryland, trying to do something better for society and for okay. myself, too. I don't know if everyone's going to agree about simple once they hear <laughs> and understand you know, what you guys have been able to do. So with that being said, talk to us about the company. What does Text Behind do? Who is Text Behind? Well, um, we wanted to create a, a viable, practical, and affordable solution for the family and friends, and even pen pals, to communicate with incarcerated individuals nationwide uh, through the existing technology and not have to invent mm -hmm. the wheel all over again. Especially, it is good for the children. So what we have wow. done is created a set of software products for the family and friends to keep in touch with their loved ones. And the best part is that it's a full cycle communication system, which means that when inmates write back, mm -hmm. we deliver their messages back to the phones and computers of the family. So they don't have to deal with the envelopes, the printing, the uh, uh, post office, or wow. any other costs. So it just makes it all very convenient. So from my cell phone, I could just send a text and through it goes through your service and is delivered to my loved one? Yes. As you know that um, inmates do not have any kind of technology uh, available to them on the inside. Okay. So through our free to download mobile app, mm -hmm. you create your letter, which is a text message and attached mm -hmm. photographs or even greeting wow. card or other uh, services. When the data comes to us, we print them in a specialized format and deliver to the uh, prison facility, who then uh, give it to the inmate after right. their initial screening. And inmates are instructed in the same letter how to respond back. So they can take any piece of paper wow. and they can write back the response, which comes back to our facility. And mm -hmm. then we digitize their letters and send back to the family's original phone and computer. Uh, electronic from there. So it, it takes a very wow. uh, small turnaround time for them to uh, uh, you know, right. say something and hear back something. That is a fabulous way to figure out how to utilize technology. Technology is right. used for so much today, but now knowing <clears throat> that that service, and I would imagine there are plenty of loved ones that, for whatever reason, have challenges in getting information to their loved one, but everyone uses text today. Correct. So I would imagine that that just being significant. How did this idea, how did this concept be start um, again from that concept and then get to the place you guys are today? And I'd love for you to 
in answering this question, also help the audience understand where you are today by way of how many lives you've been able to touch. But how do you get that from the concept to the stage of, of, of actually making it happen and having subscribers? Well, um, the original idea was suggested to me by a friend uh, during a casual conversation. And I'm a very compassionate person to begin with. And I really think about the children um, who are not as privileged as, as my children or somebody else's children mm -hmm. in a perfect world. So long-term incarceration creates a series of social, emotional, psychological issues. Right. So being a technologist, I think about solving problems on a daily basis. And that triggered some thoughts in my mind that how can I utilize my skills and exposures and the wealth of knowledge mm -hmm. towards helping those children eventually. Right. So through a series of planning steps, um, I came up with the idea of um, developing this software product that is cost effective and fast mm -hmm. and reliable. Mm -hmm. um, just like every other startup company, we faced all those challenges that you do when how to, where to start and where to go and who will write the check. So we were lucky enough to have the first initial round of family and friends and co-founders, our personal money, to kickstart the development of the product. And once we get to a certain stage, uh, we realized even further how impactful uh, and socially beneficial it can be. Mm -hmm. So we approached uh, a venture group funded by the state of Maryland to look into the business plan and our compassion and look at the future social impact that this company will create. So we got some um, funding mm -hmm. from that venture group right. that gave us the uh, standing in the state of Maryland. Mm -hmm. So we proved the concept by getting a few hundred customers and uh, from there onwards, you know, it's just all history. And uh, so far, in the last uh, about four to five months, we have connected over 24,000 loved ones. Wow. And that was a big achievement for us. Mm -hmm. And even we were interviewed by Forbes wow. um, to highlight this to uh, the wider audience. I, I think that's fabulous. Now, are you guys only in Maryland right now? Or are you in other states? And if not, what is your plan? Um, initially, we did launch only in the state of Maryland to prove the concept. Mm -hmm. We wanted to see that hey, this is very novel technology and how the public will receive mm -hmm. and react to it. So once we received the in in initial encouragement, uh, we went nationwide because while we were in the state of Maryland, people from around the nation also kept sending messages that when would you yeah. launch a service here because we need it. So. On December 5th, 2014, we went nationwide. And wow. since then, you know, uh, we've been wow. getting customers and users right. and testimonials ever since. I'll tell you, the other interesting part of this to me is <clears throat> in initially hearing this, you would think it was a nonprofit um, type of venture, but understanding it's for profit. Where, was there ever discussions or thoughts as to whether you would be a nonprofit versus a for-profit enterprise, considering the um, the audience that you were looking to work with? Right, that's a very good question. Initially, we had all types of thoughts because the uh, the DNA of this company is compassion mm -hmm. and genuine care. For the, for the people who are in distress mm -hmm. and they're suffering from lack of communication. So, but as we know that America has the capitalist economic system where companies that are only nonprofit cannot have enough traction right. to expand and help, you know, wider audience and on mm -hmm. a, you know, expedited basis. And corporations that are only after money, we know that they are not favorable by by the public right. at all. So as an industrial solutions designer, um, I took a middle approach that how can I build a for-profit company and of course pay them who paid me to get it started mm -hmm. to help other people, but also make techs behind behave like a human. Mm -hmm. 
And ever since we have done everything in our ability to make text behind behave like a human to the customers. And that is right. why, as our customers can, um, you know, if you ever speak to them, they will tell you that how good our customer service is. So, you know, we're just trying our best to help as many people as we can. I think that's fabulous because I, I really do think that you would have probably, um, as you stated, you would not be able to reach a, a wide enough mass if it was nonprofit Correct. because of trying to, especially early on, Correct. trying to get to enough capital, trying to get the kind of bandwidth you need, things of that nature. But it's also interesting that you've been able to, to find capital um, for a cause of this nature, Correct. but because you were able to do some friends and family, that gave you your start, and I think it was significant to find a state-funded venture right. um, concern that, that put some push behind it. Right. I'm looking forward to, to and I'll, I'll ask you the question on the other side of that break that's coming up, but I'm looking forward to finding out how you're going to um, continue to finance full capitalization because understanding that you're still young, you're still mainly, the bulk of, of what you're doing right now is in one state, but you know, I know from conversations that you're looking to really roll it out and if I'm correct, not only nationally but internationally. internationally yes. I, I, I think that's fabulous and so before we get there, do you have a sense of um, how much is it going to take for you to be able to get to that place? W what kind of capital is going to be necessary for something like right. this? Well, when you develop a business initially, to even to just make it cash positive, and then you grow. You know, in every business evolution, there are you know generally three stages: the venture, the growth, and uh, then you expand the mm -hmm. services. So we are in growth stage, and this is a very ambitious stage for us because we want to help everyone. Mm -hmm. But of course, that will, it, that will take infrastructure-wide yeah. development. So initially, you know, we have consumed just under a million dollars to uh, develop the company to this point. But when it comes to developing the infrastructure, yeah. then I cannot tell you right now how much it will take. But as we are growing, we are also gaining enough traction, enough attention from the venture capitalist and investors to, to get to that level. And, but the thing is, the secret is in our business plan. That is okay. how we're able to satisfy the, the financial requirements of our investors mm -hmm. and the compassionate requirements of our audience. Okay. So it's a, it's a combination between the two. We are going to take a short station break, then return with Zia Reyna of Text Behind to continue unplugging how their system connects families. We hope you will stay tuned. Need help? We are here. Whether you're feeling sad, frustrated, or happy, we've got you covered. There's someone who understands life from your perspective. Yourlifeyourvoice.org. They're here to help you figure it all out. All you have to do is call or click today. Yourlifeyourvoice.org. Welcome back. You are watching Skills to Pay the Bills and today's segment of Resources Unplugged. Our guest today is Zia Reyna, co-founder, president, and CEO of Text Behind. Welcome back, Zia. Thank you. So we were talking uh, before the break about how you're going to complete <clears throat> capitalizing the company in order to really scale it up to, to where you, you guys are trying to take it. Correct. And so b before we really um, dig into that, I did still want to find out what are some of the benefits of the service to both parties the, the inmate as well as the loved one on the outside. Right, and this is also the crust of our service as well. That, see, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cycle uh, of lack of communication and then creates different issues here. So when somebody is incarcerated, 
over the months, family communication begins to decline. Mm -hmm. And after a year or two, they hardly hear from anybody from the outside. And on the outside, family has to stay in contact with them because of yeah. relationships and above all, the children. Yeah. Because when they go to school, the environment is all about the mommy and daddy. And when they go there, psychologically they think, where is my mommy or oh, daddy? Mm -hmm. So it really hurts them psychologically and emotionally. It's very important for their character development, the psychological well-being, that they should have both parties. At least yeah. they should stay in communication with them. So first of all, text behind makes it convenient for the family and even the children to consistently and more affordably communicate with incarcerated individuals. Yeah. And over the years, what will happen is that the inmate would now never lose the contact with their family. So when they come out, psychologically, they'll be, they'll be welcome. They'll be more a healthier stage than they would be otherwise. So it really is a long-term mm -hmm. benefit to our family and friends, you know. So why, why the difference, um, there's never been a reason that they couldn't communicate, they just, there are, are many times that it's just not, not happening. Convenient. What, and that's I guess what I wanted to find out, what makes this so much more convenient for them to actually do it? Well, we did not uh, create a service that will make the families create or buy anything new to continue communicating. Mm -hmm. They already have cell phones, computers, mm -hmm. and they can also call into our service. So making our orders possible through our phone, through the entire team, but also in a part of the service mm -hmm. to make it convenient for everyone. For example, based on our research, um, our target demographic has uh, over 64% of them have smartphones, right? and more than 20% of them have computers. So that covers most of, majority of the demographic that uses this technology to communicate, or create text messages mm -hmm. or emails. And other moms and pops that, that do not have any kind of technology, for them we have a phone number. They can call in and we go extra mile to just transcribe their messages or process their orders wow. and try to, um, there's one service we have that has works wonders for families and friends. Mm -hmm. When they are trying to communicate, when they try to communicate with an uh, individual on their own, they don't know always the uh, inmate ID or where they're located and what is the proper address and what is the proper method of sending a letter to the facility. Mm -hmm. So we have a team that will not only find your loved one anywhere in the nation, but will also guide you and educate mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. how to send messages that will actually yeah. be delivered to, to the inmate. So we actually are a buffer between right. the legislation and also the families and try to make sure that we can connect them as much as possible. Right. So TextPN is not just a piece of software, it's a service mm -hmm. that is bringing people together. Um, for the moment, are you hearing anything from the those that run and manage the facilities? Um, your service appears as though it doesn't impact what happens at the facility, but is there any communication that happens between text behind the facilities or does it all stay with the inmate and their loved one? Well, we are impacting the facility process significantly. Uh, first of all, our letters are contraband free. There is no physical contraband in it, which means that we are making the uh, prison staff's job much easier right. and safer right. because we care about them as well. Um, we do uh, occasionally uh, communicate with the uh, wardens, the uh, lieutenants of the uh, facilities, and we get mixed reviews. Okay. We are appreciated because they understand, mm -hmm. but then it also depends on others who do not understand yet and because we are new it's to the industry. New, right. So as we are growing and making a bigger you know, impact mm -hmm. and all parties are beginning to understand that this is the new way of communicating mm -hmm. and making things easier. So we are getting better and better approval rating overall. Right. I, I think that's fabulous. Right. I, I think what doors have been open for you so far, if any, to begin working with the other states? Well. 
Interesting fact is that text behind does not really require the contractual relationship with the facility. We are basically taking the electronic data from the family, transform that into regular mail, mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. sending them through the regular USPS mail. So we are not doing anything proprietary on that level, which means that uh, as a basic civil right, the facility has to mm -hmm. accept the mailing. Okay. Right? So we did not feel any a significant resistance otherwise um, or, or hurdles that right. the facility would not accept our mailings. Okay. But, but again, it depends on you know who is opening the mail and who is mm -hmm. doing that. So some mm -hmm. mishaps do happen, mm -hmm. but I can say over 99% of the cases, you know, we deliver messages. Okay, so, so again, in talking about growth, it's really just a matter of when you guys are ramped up to the point that you can start getting to the next state, then the Correct. next state. Okay, wonderful. So great segue now to go back to the capitalization of it. Right. Um, as any young, small startup company, capital is always um, something that you have to find um, cons often and more of. It, are there any mechanisms, for instance, the Jobs Act, um, which has lowered the bar on what companies are able to do in reaching out for capital? Is that or anything else a part of what uh, you guys are able to utilize or walking into to help you to bring in the capital that is necessary to get to the next stage? Right. That's a very good question. I would like to answer it slightly. I'll okay. take back. Um, just like any other field, you really have to be good at what you're doing. So before you even reach any investor, even your own family member, you have to make sure that you put everything that yeah. you want to do on paper yeah. and you think and rethink it. I like Plan that. it properly. Mm -hmm. And once you write everything down, mm -hmm. when you read things to yourself, it clarifies a lot of the questions mm -hmm. and it helps you see things with greater clarity. Mm -hmm. And you polish yourself over time. Right. And when you present yourself to someone, have the knowledge yeah. of what you're doing and what you want to achieve. You should have the vision because investors especially, yeah. they look for the potential of your vision. Mm -hmm. They look at you, not something on the mm -hmm. paper. Mm -hmm. So there comes a time when what's on the paper becomes irrelevant. It's you yeah. that who are the star of the show. So I would highly recommend that uh, they should reach out to not only just the state you know, venture groups, but they should also look for the private investors. Mm -hmm. But whichever route they take, mm -hmm. having the good business plan and having the knowledge of, of where you are and where you want to go, it's the pivotal, yeah. uh, it's, it's most important than anything else. I gotta tell you, of what you said, one of the biggest things I wanna make sure we go back to touch on is you guys have done the friends and family round and right. you just stated that even when you are trying to get to capital with friends and family, you gotta have y your stuff written out. You gotta have a plan for them also. Absolutely. You present to them no different than you would an outside party. Correct. And a lot of people don't think about that. So I'm glad that you raised that a right. as a point. Right. Another psychological factor here is that when you are even writing your business plan, mm -hmm. let's say you take six months to a year to complete the entire research process and development and you think through everything. Right. But think about this for a moment. The investors will look at your plan in 10 minutes. Yes. So they're looking at everything as a movie. Mm -hmm. So you have to really plan mm -hmm. it out to look like a good story. Yeah. That's what it, the convincing factor in the business plan. Yeah. So you have to have a proper storyboard that, again, where you are, where you want to go, there mm -hmm. should be a point A and point mm -hmm. B, and along the way you have to provide the value. So investors yeah. look for the value in the process. And the, everything that is in between has to be realistic. Absolutely. You know, because invest, that's what they do. So they can look at your numbers. If your numbers don't tie into your marketing, which doesn't tie into, you know, how you're actually going to ramp things up, that, that's seen right. very easily. And that's part of the original, uh, you know, self-education that you need to understand where you are, which yeah. means that you need to understand your audience. Yeah. You need to understand the statistics, the yeah. usage behaviors, the uh, understand the problem itself, that what are you trying to fix? Right. And once you understand the problem, 
that also you know shed some light on the solution, possible solution of it. And the better you articulate, the better your plan is. Zia, we have about a minute left. Is there anything you would like to make sure that um, the audience understands about what you guys are bringing to the table for families um, in?